And uh, this paper was basically, this was done and study was done at our center. And we looked at the people who have obesity and overweight and have multiple comorbidities. Are they complaining of obesity as a disease? So this study was retrospective observational study conducted in Asian Indian population in New Delhi to assess the percentage of persons with high body mass index and associated comorbid uh, conditions presenting with overweight or obesity as a medical problem and seeking medical treatment for obesity. Data of all the patients visiting during last previous six, 18 months was analyzed and we, we had more than, uh, we had 196 persons screened, 97 persons with BMI more than 23. People who were in the obesity group, those who complained of obesity were significantly younger and had a higher BMI. Those who never complained of obesity had significantly higher number of people with at least one comorbidity. 94% people had at least one comorbidity. And 82% people had at least two comorbidities. But only 18% of the people complained of obesity as a disease, while 78% with people with comorbidities also did not complain of obesity as a problem with them. So there is clinical inertia in obesity, and there are two types of inertia. We are talking, we have been reading clinical inertia and diabetes, but there are two types of inertia in uh, obesity. One is the diagnostic inertia, the failure to diagnose disease. And other is the therapeutic inertia, failure to advance therapy or de-intensify therapy when it is appropriate to do so. This is the definition which we use for clinical inertia and diabetes. But I think more appropriate definition here is to failure to initiate or optimize therapy when it is appropriate to do so in people with obesity. So there are two types of inertia here. It is not just clinical inertia, there is diagnostic inertia in obesity also. So diagnostic inertia, as I mentioned, is failure to diagnose disease and has not been analyzed in obesity and data is very, very scanty on this. The uh, therapeutic inertia is another component and we believe that medical nutrition therapy and physical activity are the, uh, they are the treatment for obesity and they are the exclusively used treatments most of the time. Despite availability of adjunctive interventions, including psychological interventions, pharmacological therapy, and bariatric surgery. So are these people assisted in losing weight? This was a study, you know, uh, which was recently published. And this was a study from, uh, which looked at the local population of Spain to quantify obesity inertia and primary health care in the Valencian population. Study was primarily done to look at the cardiovascular risk factors. And the whole population who are 40 years and above and older who had been recruited in the study for more than six months were invited to take part in the study. Obesity inertia existed in one in every six persons in this study where the people were already having cardiovascular risk. But looking at the obesity inertia in a population, it is, there is hardly any data. This is another study which looked at, this was a quantitative study to understand why people with living with obesity and their general or family practitioners experience therapeutic inertia in obesity. And this involved interviews with people living with obesity and their general practitioners or family physicians. Telephonic interviews were conducted and the same person conducted interview with the patient as well as the treating healthcare person. Both People with obesity and the treating physicians perceived obesity to be a secondary health priority that is associated with negative emotions or stigmatization, you can say, and this had a pervasive influence on obesity management. People with obesity were hesitant to explore new strategies due to financial barriers, access to support, and concerns about the adverse side effects or effectiveness of therapy or sustainability of interventions and so on. If you look at the responses from <coughs> general practitioners or the family physicians, they had limited time and resources. They were hesitant to recommend specific treatments due to concern about risk of the therapies used, the effectiveness of the therapy used, and the accessibility of these therapies. They were also hesitant to make referrals due to skepticism whether the other health care providers will be able to provide you know, the proper treatment for these people. Uh, as 
for the people living obesity, healthcare coverage for many people did not include obesity treatment and services. In India, it, it is not part of the coverage unless somebody is going for bariatric surgery and it is indicated. And people with obesity were often unable to afford the treatment. They also perceived obesity to be secondary priority while managing other illnesses and responsibilities which, were, which took precedence over obesity management. They also believed that lifestyle modifications only was the treatment for available for obesity management. They also hesitated to use prescription medicines and bariatric surgery due to financial reasons and concerns about the side effects or the long-term effectiveness of the available therapeutic strategies. They, uh, you know, even after the initial weight loss, they often struggled to maintain that weight loss and this was accompanied by a decreasing motivation and commitment to obesity management over a period of time and in due course they were gaining weight. These findings underscore the need for accessible resources and professional support for people with obesity. Now, if we look at the clinical inertia, what is causing it? Why are we having clinical inertia? The biggest challenge is the prevalent obesity narrative. What is the current obesity narrative? It is not just India. India, we have this narrative, but globally also this narrative is there. And the narrative says that obesity is a self-imposed condition with an easy way out, which is eat less and walk more. And this is the basic understanding or connotation associated with obesity globally. This simplistic narrative of obesity as a self-imposed condition with an easy way out creates a clear discrepancy on how obesity is managed in the healthcare systems in comparison to other diseases and the overestimation of efficacy of therapeutic intervention solely based on education lifestyle modification is responsible for therapeutic inertia in healthcare professionals and the guidelines, limiting or delaying the adoption of more therape effective therapeutic strategies like newer medication and bariatric surgery. Based on these false assumptions that individual can fully control their body weight through appropriate behavior choices, obesity is, or the obesity is uh, simply reversible, persuading the patient to follow healthier or more virtuous, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle is usually thought possible, but it is not so. The persistent narrative also forms the deep root for stigmatization of the people with obesity, which is social stigma and also is leads to clear uh, discrepancy on how obesity prevention or management strategies are you know developed at the so, uh, healthcare authorities level leading to so called clinical stigma this is a paper published by luca bosetto he is one of the authorities in italy and this is a recent paper published in 2021 looking at the forefront against the disease stigma and therapeutic inertia this is the abstract and at the bottom, he has written very nice thing, level of evidence, there is no level of evidence. There is hardly any data on this component of obesity. So uh, if we look at the prevalent obesity narrative of uh, obesity as a simple consequence of individual failures and lack of willpower uh, is responsible for the lack of support of uh, systemic preventive measures against obesity at political and social level. In conclusion, the persistent of a narrative describing obesity as a self-induced, uh, easily reversible condition has profound consequences on how health, how obesity prevention and management are developed or built up, including the design and implementation of obesity management guidelines and tendency for therapeutic inertia. So in nutshell, we have a uh, narrative that individuals can control their body weight through appropriate behavior choices and obesity is self-imposed condition with the easy way out of eat more, eat less and walk more or move more. This leads to stigma against people leading to uh, disorders of mental health, binge eating, unhealthy eating habits and further going on increasing weight. On the other hand, it also leads to clinical stigma leading to decreased systemic preventive approaches, decreased funding for obesity research decreased coverage for obesity management and increase in therapeutic inertia. And all is leading to a stigma increasing the individual suffering and decreased development of healthcare system in terms of supporting obesity. 
Now, what are the interventions to overcome the inertia? Most important is the education, education both at the level of patient and healthcare providers. Of course, there are multiple measures which need to be put in place, motivating and supporting the patients on self-management, effective use of inform information system, developing quality measures, adherence to medication, adherence to guidelines, personal feedback to HCPs and so on. Changing the narrative is very important. Obesity is not a sign of affluence. Obesity or people living with obesity are not healthy. People will come, wife will come and say, look doctor, my husband is little healthy. My son is healthy. That means they are overweight. So it is not healthy. They have to understand they are, they are unhealthy. Recognition of obesity as chronic complex disease is very important and recognition of the fact that obesity needs to be treat like, treated like any other chronic disease like hypertension or type 2 diabetes is important. And that treatment may be required lifelong. With that, I conclude my presentation. I would again like to invite you all for the RSSDI 2024. Dr. J.K. Sharma has elaborately told about the conference. I can assure you this is going to be one of the lifetime experiences visiting this venue and enjoying the RSSDI initial conference. Thank you very much for your patient attention.